first. Hey, I'm here with Glenn Sobel from Alice Cooper, and we're going to build him a rack today. How's it going? Good, Brent. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. <laughs> so, uh, hey, Glenn, can you tell us a little bit about what you, uh, what you got coming up here this next year? Well, in less than two months, we're going to be heading out on the next leg of the Alice Cooper tour. I guess this would be called the No More Mr. Nice Guy 2012 tour, basically an extension of what we were doing last year. Last year we did like 100 shows in 23 countries on five continents, so this year is looking like it's going to be similar to last year. We're starting off in early June. Uh, we've got Bonnaroo coming up. I think that's our first official show, actually. So I'm really looking forward to that. we got some other festivals and shows in the U.S., and then around June 21st we're hooking up with Iron Maiden for a month. And we're going to do a lot of Midwest, East Coast, and Canada with them. I can't wait. And then after that, it's straight over to Europe for a run of shows and festivals. And I think we got a little break then, but then we're back out again for uh, late summer, early fall, back to Europe. Uh, we'll probably be in London for Halloween like we were last year. They got it all planned out all the way till about like early, mid-December. So our play is pretty full right now. But in addition to that, um, there's uh, going to be some drum clinics this year. There's going to be some drum festivals and clinics if we could fit all that in. And in the meantime, I just, I've been in Los Angeles and doing gigs and sessions and teaching as usual, just trying to play drums every day for some reason or another, you know, otherwise life is just, it's not worth living. Got to have drums in it on a daily basis, right? Exactly. Are you going to have any time to sleep in between all this stuff? I hope, man. I, that's like my biggest problem is sleep. You know, I go to bed at night just with drums in my head and the click track and just thinking drums and I could have played that show better, that one lick, I kind of missed that. That's the stuff that goes through my head. So. Let's, let's hope that I get some sleep this year. <laughs> yeah, that's the best thing for your body to repair itself is to sleep. And on tour, we're doing these 95 minute sets and it's just nonstop. For drummers, the Alice Cooper gig is very demanding because there is no break between songs. He doesn't talk to the audience. So it's just one song after another. It's just this straight 95 minute set. So stamina has got to be up and yeah, you got to have good sleep. Wow, wow. Well. Glenn, dude, we are extremely stoked that you uh, came over and joined the Gibraltar family. And, um, you know, um, we'd love to see, you know, what, what was it that inspired you to come over to us? What, what made you interested in Gibraltar? Well, for years, a long time, you know, when I've been on certain tours, festival tours, or just being at shows, I see these just great setups that drummers have using your rack systems. It just looks amazing, and it's like when you have that, you're, you're a badass. It's like you, you've really come to the point where you're able to make a statement with your setup, that alone, and it becomes like this thing that is identified with the drummers that play that, and it, it looks amazing, and uh, when I had a chance to meet with everybody from Gibraltar, including yourself, I jumped at the chance. You know, This was something that I really wanted to make happen, and it looks like we're doing it today. We're yeah. here. <laughs> Okay, um, if you can, I know I'm going to put you on the spot here for a oh. second, um, but describe Gibraltar in three words. Okay, that's easy. Well, convenience, number one, because um, we don't have to worry about the placement of cymbal stands and taping down cymbal stands. It's something we've always had to be concerned with. If you're on a rock tour and you're hitting hard, those cymbal stands, they tend to vibrate and move away, or, or worse, they vibrate and they move towards you. That's happened a lot, and that's like a drummer's biggest pet peeve. So yeah, convenience. It looks amazing aesthetically. You know, if you're way far back at some festival, you're gonna still see this setup. It's gonna look amazing, you know? And then of course, durability, the stuff lasts. It's obviously really sturdy and uh, there'll be very little need for replacement parts because the stuff, it, it can withstand the rigors of the road and playing 100 shows in a year. So I think that, is that three? Yeah, that was, uh, you gave a great description. All right, that was great. a great description. Well, cool, man. Um, thanks for, you know, trapping me over here, luring me into your, uh, look like, what was it, crypt of a drum yeah. lab. <laughs> here, right? Yeah, right, right, right. Night vision photography. I'm, I'm afraid that, you know, scary pig guy from uh, Saw is going to come out and, like, nab us or something and put us in the Jaws of Life thing. <laughs> yeah, this place has a vibe. You got to agree with that. I dig it. And it sounds, you know, huge. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Um, I guess we'll see you after we're done with the rack. Thanks, Brent. Thanks for coming down. I'm totally appreciative of all this. It's going to be 
an amazing looking drum set. I can't wait for everybody to see it.